burning hell Control Almighty Turn your heart to Jesus now He alone can save your soul If you should die and your soul will be lost No one fault but yours Hey, hey My God, in hell, fire never goes out. Hey, in hell, no one never dies. The fire of hell is real. I wanna tell you, my friends, fire of hell is real. I say, fire of hell is real. Oh, if you miss heaven, you'll burn in hell. For the fire of hell is real. Jesus went down into hell. Set the captives free hey! He took the keys of death and hell To give us life eternally Lord, the fire of hell is real I say, fire of hell is real God, if you miss hell You'll burn in hell For the fire of hell is real Revelation. Read about the tribulation. Read about the judgment day. Come in and those reject Jesus Christ. Yeah, fire of hell is real. I'm saying the fire of hell is real. If you miss hell, you burn in hell. For the fire of hell is real. I will tell you again. The fire of hell is real The fire of hell is real No, if you miss heaven You'll burn in hell For the fire of hell is real If you miss heaven You'll burn in hell For the fire of hell is real Spread the news If you miss heaven You'll burn in hell Fire of hell is real You're listening to Choice Gospel Radio on 92.9 FM. This is the night, the evening that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Whatever situations you're going through on tonight, Jesus is there to break every chain. Just trust him where you don't see him and depend on his word. His word is sure. It's forever settled in heaven. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. There's power in the name of Jesus. Supernatural power for the impossible. There is power he's a limitless God. Jesus. And he's powerful. There is power. Whatever is holding you bondage tonight, Jesus wants to break every chain tonight. And you must submit your life to him. Give him your heart today. Now is the day of salvation. To break every chain. Hallelujah. To break every chain. There is supernatural power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. There is power. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You're listening to 
Salvation and Revelation, a program that's heard every Wednesday evening at this time, 7 p.m., and on Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. And uh, it is geared to bring you into fullness of knowing Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, to accept him as your Lord and Savior, and to sharpen you as the believer so that we will be rapture ready, we will be ready, we are living in end times, and there is power in the name of Jesus. We have to be ready for his second coming. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. This is Evangelist Jennifer. Whatever you need, whatever you want, everything that you hope for, by faith in Jesus Christ, you can achieve it. Amen. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before your throne room of grace, O Lord. And this, O oh God, is the evening, O oh God, where we come and we learn more of you, O oh God. We say thank you, O oh God, there is power in your name, O oh God, to break every chain, O oh God. We say thank you, O oh God, that all chains are broken right now. It's not by might, it's not by power, but by your spirit, O oh God. We say thank you for your word, O oh God. We have no power of our own, O oh God. But Father, O oh Lord God, even as we come be your throne, before your throne, O oh God, we ask you, O oh Lord, Father, to send you the power of your Holy Spirit, to rightly divide your word of truth, that whatever is said, whatever is taught today, O oh God, that it will be received, O oh God, your people will be built up today, O oh God, that Father, they would have that power from, O oh God, the supernatural, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, from the Holy Spirit, from God Almighty, that whatever they face this evening, O oh Lord God, that we will come into the fullness, O oh God, of knowing who you are, that we will come in one as one body, O oh God, O oh God, Father, led by one Holy Spirit, trusting in Jesus Christ, uh, the only way, the one truth and the one life, O oh God. Tonight, O oh God, Father, for that one who do not know you as Lord and Savior, Father, Lord God, I decree and I declare, O oh God, salvation to that one, O oh God. You said, O oh God, many are called, but few are chosen, O oh God. So I ask you, O oh God, to send your Holy Spirit to draw someone, O oh God, into the fullness of who you are, that they will not just know about you, but they would accept you as Lord and Savior on tonight. I decree and I declare, O oh God, for that one, O oh God, who is struggling with chains, O oh God, that tonight, O oh God, I decree and I declare it's broken by the power of the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus. It's not by might, it's not by power, but everything is done by your spirit. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise, we give you thanks, O oh God. We just want to tell you that we love you, O oh God. We love you, O oh God. We have no other power of our own, O oh God, but by your spirit, O oh God. So I ask you, O oh God, on this evening, O oh God, to anoint me afresh that whatever is spoken, O oh God, there shall be nothing missing and nothing lacking, O oh God, that we all will be built up, edified, O oh God, to live a better life for you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, break every chain. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Oh, the sun set free is free indeed. Father, oh God, we pray for those who are in prison, oh God, those who are held captive, oh God, oh God, fairly and unfairly, oh God, those, oh God, Father, who's waiting on a judgment, oh God, we ask you to send the power of your Holy Spirit, that who the sun set free is free indeed, in the name of Jesus. Set them free by the power of your Holy Spirit. There is healing in the name of Jesus. If you are sick tonight, uh, the Bible says, Oh God, Father, if we have small faith uh, as the grain of a mustard seed, Oh God, uh, that we can move a mountain. So we bind, Oh God, every sickness, every disease, uh, cancer, uh, HIV, Oh God. Father, Lord God, uh, we ask you, Oh God, to heal heart conditions, lungs, Oh God, diabetes, Oh God, Father, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, mental problems, Oh God, emotional disturbances, I bring them before you and I decree and I declare, Oh, the sunset free is free indeed. By your stripes, Jesus, we are healed. And we say thank you for healing on this evening. In Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God, 
I lift, O oh God, those who are traveling on tonight, O oh God. Traveling, O oh God, by aircraft, O oh God. By trains, by buses, O oh God. By taxis, O oh God. Even in private cars, O oh God. Going to and from, O oh God. One place or another, O oh God. I ask you, O oh God, to send your angels of protection, O oh God. That they would not be on the news on tonight or tomorrow or no other day of their lives, O oh God. I decree divine protection over the airway, O oh God. Over, O oh God, the highways and the byways, O oh God. Protect with your angels, your people, O oh God. Wherever they are, O oh God. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we say thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is Lord. Tonight, even as we come before the presence, we are in the presence of the Lord. And if we, 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 we have the word in front of us here on tonight, uh, with the word of the Lord is already blessed. And the scripture reading is taken from, we're going to read, if you have your Bibles, turn to Acts chapter 2, reading from verse 37. Praise the name of the Lord. It said, when the, Acts chapter 2, verse, from verse 37 all the way to 47, it says, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord your God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourself from this untowards generation. When they had gladly received his word and were baptized, and the same day were added unto them about 3,000 souls, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in the breaking of bread and in prayer. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men as every man had need and they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house and eating their meat with gladness and singleness of heart praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved amen and amen praise the name of the Lord hallelujah the Lord added to the church Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. He added to the church. His power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. And whatever situations you're going through tonight, God wants you to know tonight that we have to be in one accord. Whatever situation, we come in one accord with his plan for your life. His plan for your life is salvation, first of all. He wants you to be saved. You must be born again. He said, if we believe in our heart and we, you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord, that he will come into your heart. Amen. He will write your name in heaven. He will send the Holy Spirit to live inside of you, to take residence in you, to teach you, to walk with you, to deposit gifts in you, to to, to to help you, to, to strengthen you. He wants you to know tonight that Jesus Christ is the Lord. The Father wants you to know that there is no other way. There is no other truth. There is no other life. Amen? Jesus Christ is Lord. And tonight, whatever situations that you're going through tonight, everything that the Lord has spoken, he wants to bring it to pass in your life. He wants you to receive all the promises that he has given to you. Amen? God is a good God and he's a faithful God. He's a covenant keeping God. Whatever situations that you're going through tonight, he, there you, you have a limitless God, a God who is able to bring all two things together. And he wants us as a body to be in one accord. He wants us to come together with one mind, one Holy Spirit, one baptism. Amen. One Jesus died for us. There's no other way. There's no other truth. There's no other life. No one comes to the Father but through Jesus Christ. Whatever it is that is holding you back in your life, whatever is keeping you away from accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today he wants you to know that every chain, everything that is holding you back, he wants to break every chain and he wants to set you free. Amen? He wants you to realize that these times is winding down. Time is getting 
we, we live in terrible times. We live in times when the word of God is what I should say, it's not taken as seriously as in time past. We see in the book of Acts chapter 2 that the disciples, was Peter was speaking to those who was, they, were, they, were, they wanted to be in the will of God. They asked, what must we do? What you were speaking? But what exactly are you telling us, Peter? And he said, speaker said, listen, you know, in my words, you know, but it's in what his thought was, he said, let me break it down to you. He's breaking it down to them. And he said, he said, repent. In Acts chapter 2, verse 38, he said, repent. He said, and be baptized. And he said, he didn't stop there. He said, every one of you, there was no ex exception. So what you had to do was number one, you had to repent. And repentance is a full turning away from the things that you used to do or you enjoy doing, you don't want to do them anymore. You want to make a 360 degree turnaround. That's what full repentance is. Not going back to the things that you love that is displeasing to God. He said you must repent, meaning you must change. Change your direction, change your course, change your behavior, change your attitude, change your mind, mindset. Put on the mind of Christ. He said you must be baptized. When we baptize, we are identifying with his, his death and resurrection. He wants you to be emerged in water. Amen. You must be baptized. Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus. There is no other name. There is baptism in different names. Amen. But there is only the baptism of of that's in the name of Jesus that can get you into the kingdom of God. He said, be baptized in the name of Jesus. There's no other name. And why? He told us why? Because that's how your sins are is going to be done away with for the remission of sins, which is to be removing sins from your life. Amen. And he said, and what's going to happen after he told us what's going to happen? He said, and you shall receive the gift of, of the Holy Spirit. So what Paul was saying, it's, it is about salvation, making it into the kingdom of God. You must be born again. Amen. And he wants you to know tonight that there's power in the name of Jesus. He was telling them there is no other name on the heaven and earth by which men should be saved or can be saved. Amen. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, tonight all it takes is confessing Jesus Christ as the Lord and determining in your heart that you are changing. You don't want to go back. The things you used to do, you don't want to do them no more. The places you used to go, you don't want to go there no more. The thoughts you used to have, you don't want to think that way again. And God will send the Holy Spirit to help you as you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I hear the chains falling. Praise the name of the Lord. When Peter spoke, he told them, and he said, many other words did he testify, verse 40. He said, and ex he testified and exhort, saying, save yourself from this untoward generation. You know, the generation was getting, you know, out of control, out of the alignment of what God had said concerning how, you know, we should walk, how we should live. Amen. When they had gladly received his word and was baptized, the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Yes. We need to go back to the apostles' doctrine. There's so many ways. We started this um, series on uh, this teaching, I would say, on, uh, you know, unity and being in one accord. And uh, we see that we are straight. We understood, you know, the Christian um today there's so many facets of christianity so much different you know how should say doctrines and there was the apostles doctrine which jesus gave and he said listen the doctrine of salvation the, 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 the bible says you must be born again he told gave us and if you have your bibles turn to luke i'm sorry matthew chapter 28 we're going to look more closely on what jesus said amen matthew chapter 28 praise the name of the lord Praise the name. And it says here, Jesus was speaking, you know, and I'm going to read from verse um, 16. He said, when the 11 disciples, Matthew 28 from verse 16 all the way to 20. He said, when the 11 disciples went away into Galilee, into the mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. 
but some doubted. Yes, you will always have doubters. And it's because of sometimes, you know, many pe denominations came out of people who doubted. P people who, who, who questioned or was not in line with what Jesus was saying. Some of them who were, some of them had legitimate reason to move away because of certain things that was creeping into the church. Some of them had noble and just reasons to move away. And some of them, it was because of their own personal reasons. And, you know, starting with moving away from the original church of Jesus Christ, going into the model of the Roman government, you know, coming up with a Latin church, Catholic church, meaning universal, that the church that gave rise and then continue to subdivide into different denominations. And, you know, by, you know, I think it was 1534, even all the way down there, you see, you know, King Henry VIII, you know, wanted to get a divorce and then the Church of England was birthed out of it because Catholic church would not give him right to divorce his wife. Amen. So different people had different reasons as to why you know they moved away and some was like I say good causes and some of them was you know selfish reasons own agendas and so forth but you must remember as we look at the gospel of Jesus Christ that we have to adhere to the true gospel of Jesus Christ man doctrine and denomination does not count in God's kingdom no God said he wants us to be in one mind one accord when things come into one accord not no telling what is going to happen amen that you know two is better than one the word of God said they said can two walk together unless they agree they have to be an agreement and the first agreement we must have is to be born again coming in agreement with the plan of God amen God wants to come into you to come into fellowship so he can walk with you he can talk with you he can call you his own he doesn't want you to just know about him and he wants to break every chain as we look at what the word of God says in Matthew 26 reading from verse 16 he said when the 11 disciples went away into Galilee into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them and when they saw him they worshiped him but some doubted and Jesus came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth and he said go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit verse 20 said teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you and lo i am with it with you always even unto the end of the world amen matthew chapter 28 and verse 16 to verse 20 jesus was speaking and there was 11 disciples because one between one betrayed him that was judas so now the 11 of them he was speaking to them and when they saw him they worship him but some doubted amen some doubted there will always be doubters amen whatever you're doing do it and stay focused on jesus christ of nazareth who called you for those of you who are saved and you know maybe people are doubting you and what you are doing you you're wondering am i doing the right thing so long as the holy spirit of god have spoken to you amen they doubted jesus so who are you a servant is not greater than the master so if you have doubters praise the name of the lord jesus christ was doubted we see some doubted him amen because sometimes we get shaken by men and by people because we want to have all everybody to like us and to love us everybody did not love jesus everybody did not like his doctrine but he came with a message from an assignment from the father and we are on assignment we are servants of the most high god and whatever he has spoken to your spirit man long as you know as long as you know that jesus christ said it he has commanded it he has instructed you he has spoken to your spirit man he said my sheep knows my voice and they follow after me and because sometimes we are listening to our own spirit i said before there are the satan and his cohorts his angels his de demonic angels and demons speaks to us amen there are angels of the lord that is speaking to us there's our own spirit that speaks to us and there's the holy spirit that speaks to us amen and the voices that we hear he said my sheep know my voice and they follow after me we have to fine tune our spirit our 
air or spiritual air to hear from the Holy Spirit. We have to open up our eyes to see what the Spirit of the Lord is showing us. Amen. If not, we're going to go according to the dictates of our own mind. The Word of God says, you know, that we must not lean onto our own understanding. Our mind can send us, set us in the wrong path as we saw, you know, in Genesis chapter 11 and verse 6, we saw that, you know, the children, you know, of, you know, in the earlier days, uh, they were so, you know, they were in Babel and they wanted to build this tower so that it could reach to heaven, which was not in God's plan that man should meet up to heaven by building themselves a tower and trying to make a name for themselves. All name, there's power in the name of Jesus. They wanted power in their own name and they wanted to be recognized. Amen. God wants us to humble ourselves under his mighty hand and in due time he will exalt us. Amen. So as we see that he, God, Jesus was saying here, he spoke to them and he said, all power is given to me in heaven and in earth. All power belongs to God. We have no power of our own. No matter what you are doing, no matter what you are thinking, no matter what you think you're capable of achieving, we have no power of our own. And in the, at the first century, we see so many people, so many churches evolved, so many different denominations came about because men was looking to seek, you know, different things trying to be right uh, in their own strength uh, some of them i said had good cause and good reason to you know be you know moving away from certain things there were so many things that crept into the church we see Paul, Paul again speaking to the Galatians he spoke to the Romans and he was saying this listen you know we, I want you guys to be in one accord I want you to have the, the mind of Christ I want you to remember that's only Jesus Christ is the head of the church we see, you know, today, you know, everybody has uh, their own church and their own doctrine. And we go about, okay, then this is this church. And, you know, it's the church of Jesus Christ. He is the head of the church. Amen. God has given us, uh, you know, the assignment to go. He said, go ye therefore and teach all nations, uh, baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit. The, the church has, you know, did... Uh, an awesome job in terms of going out and spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ did an awesome job of going out into the world and spreading the gospel but you know we still need further teaching in verse 20 said teaching them to observe all things we, we as the body of Christ need to be mindful that we cannot just do some things but we have to observe all all things we all have come short of God's glory and there's some things that we are not taking into consideration to each we have to self-examine and see where we have come short of God's glory amen to observing in terms of observing all things amen whatsoever I have commanded you he said I've given you certain commands I've given you certain instructions and I want you to know that I want you to I want my 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 body to be taught to be to be observant of all the things that I have commanded. We cannot take one part and teach one part. We cannot teach people how to be prosperous and don't teach them how to be saved, how to to make it, how to work out their salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. The word of God says, you know, in 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 the Joshua chapter one, you know, he says that if you have your Bibles, you can turn to Joshua chapter one. And, uh, you know, he said specifically, you know, much, much of teaching has been given, much mind has been given to teaching about prosperity and how we're going to prosper. And God said he wants us to prosper in our health, uh, even as our, our soul prospers. He wants us to be prosperous. He does not want us to be in lack. But he says here in Joshua chapter 1 and he said in verse 8 this book of the law shall not depart out of our mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then thou shalt have good success so he gave us a formula concerning how we're going to have good success how we're going to be prosperous but also mindful that we should know be mindful that that same instructions that he gave to Joshua. He said, only be strong and be very courageous that thou may observe to do according to all the law that Moses thy servant commanded thee. Now he gave, he told Moses certain commandments in the Ten Commandments that, listen, you know, this is what I want my people to observe. He said, listen, I didn't come to destroy the law, but I come to 
fulfill the law. He wants us to observe and do all things that he has commanded us to do. Amen. He said, this book of the law in verse 8 again, shall not depart out of our mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Amen. So he gave us the formula that we must observe to do all things. Here he's saying all the way that God is saying this. Now here, Jesus is saying, to speaking now, he says, teaching them, verse 20 of uh, uh, Matthew chapter 28, he said, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end. Amen. He said, teaching them to observe all things. So we're supposed to be able to, to be taught in observing all things. We told Joshua, this is the prosperity formula that I want to give you. Stay in the word of God. Do all the things that I have commanded in this word. And you are making prosperity. Um, um, you're making your way prosperous. And you will have good success. Amen. But we must study the word of God many false teaching and false prophets and false pastors and false everything everything that god can do the satan can have a replica and we have to be discerning in these end times we are living in end times and we have to observe and we have to seek the leading of the holy spirit we have to question things because many false prophets and false teachers and false pastors and false everything false apostles false bishops we have to know what is truth and what is false how can we know what is false when we have not studied properly what is truth amen he said teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you and we need to go back to the old the new testament and see what god has commanded in his gospel see what he has commanded us to do see what we can learn from the apostles doctrine amen and we know that God has given a commission that he wants us. He wants us to, to, to have faith. Hear the word of God, but hear it from the power of the Holy Spirit. Ask God when something is read or taught to you. Ask the Holy Spirit, give me a spirit of discernment that whatever I'm hearing, Lord, anything that is not of you, I reject it in the name of Jesus. Anything that is true, it, that is true, anything that is lovely of good report, anything that I need to focus on in my Christian walk or in my walk with you, whatever I need to know to go up higher with you for those who are saved, I need need to hear from the holy spirit amen man you know wisdom is not god oh god's wisdom amen the wisdom of god far surpasses man wisdom amen god did not want us to be a divided body with different philosophies and doctrines he wanted us to have one mind he wanted us to have one mindset one holy ghost one teaching amen he didn't just want want us to be saying okay you know today i think this and tomorrow you know i change my mind because somebody has told me something else what did the word of god says amen what did the word of god say to you concerning that thing amen matthew 20 said teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you amen god has given us certain things that it is a must he said pray always give thanks to him always seek first the kingdom of god that's something that he asked us to do seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness to be in right standing with him and all other things shall be added unto you for those who do not know jesus christ as the lord and savior and we thinking that we put in so many things first our education we want to have a really big bank account we want to really put god in the back burner until we get the house that we want or the the the, the, the best you know things in life that life can offer he wants you to know that as we seek god first everything else that we have in our life there are additions amen there are things that god have added to us amen he wants you to know that even tonight that whatever is holding you back that from putting god first it might be a husband it might be your children it might be you know your your, your job it might be some some it might, it might be some things that you you hold so dear to you you know you it might be your own self that you think you're high and mighty and above all god wants you to humble yourself under his mighty hand he wants you to know that you are just a lump of clay a lump of dust that he have breathed his spirit into that he gives and he takes he gives life and he can take life blessed be the name 
name of the Lord. God gives and Job said God give and God takes. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We are nothing. We cannot do nothing without him. If we just hold our breath long enough and we close our nostrils and hold our breath for at least maybe we cannot even do it for five minutes. We will faint. We will be dead. We will pass out from lack of oxygen going to our brains. We have no power of our own. And he wants you sometimes as our own self. We feel we have achieved. We still feel we have made it. We feel that we are, God, you know, the gift to the world. God wants us to humble ourselves and recognize that we are selfless servants of the Most High God. We are created for His glory. We have no glory of our own. He wants us to walk in humility. He wants us to walk ever before him recognizing that we have no righteousness of our own we have no power of our own he wants us to put him first place that's one of the things that he wants us to do and we have to be taught how to put him he said work out your salvation with fear and trembling he wants us to be he said you must be born again amen you must be born again we have to be born again. How are we born again? By confessing that Jesus Christ is Lord. If we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, he'll come into our heart and he will live there forever. If unless you decide to run away from him or stray away from him, he will write your name in heaven. Disappointed unto man wants to die and after death there is judgment. We are going to be judged for every single thing that we do. Me too we all will be judged and we want to be found blameless amen we want to be found without spot without wrinkle in our hearts we want to be blood bought and be washed in the blood of of the lamb jesus christ of nazareth many times we know about god but we do not have a relationship with him we have a relationship with our friends we have a late relationship with maybe our pastors we have a relationship with our supervisor we have a relationship with our children we have a relationship with with our loved ones but we don't have that relationship with god almighty we do not know jesus christ as a friend as a brother that sticks closer than a brother that when all the world would will forsake us that he's always there that no matter what you're going through if you will trust him with all your heart if we would not lean to our own understanding and if we will acknowledge him in everything that we would do he will direct our path amen he wants to be a lamp onto our feet and a light to our path he want path he wants us to live in unity he wants us to you live without having a to our own doctrine our own belief system and we want us to go back and see what we are doing that is not in accordance to the, to the word of god there's over over 40,000 different th churches right now the last time it was about 38,000 i know it's over 40 by now there's over at least 38,000 different denominations I'm talking about. Not even churches. Denominations. Millions of churches. Hundreds and thousands of churches. And there's only one true church of Jesus Christ. Which is the one. It's the one that follow the gospel of Jesus Christ. The apostles gospel. Amen. The apostles doctrine. The one that he gave to the disciples. He wants us to know that God is not the author. He doesn't conf he's not an author of confusion. In 1 Corinthians 14 33 he said I am not the author of confusion. So so many different doctrines. Somebody is out there and they want to be closer to God. I don't know who I'm speaking to this evening but you want to be closer to God. But there's so many different doctrines. So many different denominations. So many different teachings. One teaching said no don't eat this. The other tip, um, the, our doctrine said, the, the other denomination said, no, that's okay. This other doctrine said, okay, then guess what? Uh, you know, you cannot marry if you want to serve God in the office of a priest or in, in the office of this. Another one said, no, guess what? You can come on the pulpit and you don't need to be a priest. You don't have to be, you don't have to be celibate. You don't have to be unmarried. Uh, amen. One person says, listen, I know I've got to go through a man to confess my sin, you know, and we have to see what God will say. He said, come to God, uh, confess your sins. You don't go to a man. You come straight to God. God is not the author of confusion. He said it in 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 33. He doesn't want us to be divided. The church has really gone into 
you know, how I should say, we've wandered off from the truth because that's why there are so many different denominations. He wants us to go back to the each one of us. We are the church. We are the church. The Holy Spirit lives inside of us. Amen. And he, we have to know what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. The Holy Spirit dwells within us. Amen. Collectively, we are the body of Christ. Amen. But the building in which we go to worship, amen, is the building that hosts the body of Christ. Wherever you come together, God wants us to come together and fellowship. He said, do not forsake the assembling of the saints. We go to a whole place of worship and we go there to get to, to, to worship God with other believers, to grow in grace, to, 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 to be, be edified, to be built up on, in our faith. But he wants us to be in one accord he wants us to be on one page in our christian walk he wants us to come you know don't have different beliefs don't have this thing that we cannot unite and we must see what it is that god what is the baseline the baseline starts with salvation we must be born again you must repent peter was saying to this church you know in acts chapter 2 you know he was saying listen you must repent you must be baptized amen you must care about one another you must love one another we are our brother's keeper yes you know we all can come up higher i know that i have areas in my life where i need to be more loving to be more kind, to be more thoughtful, to be more considerate. Amen? The God, the, I have to look at my own self and see where I can come up higher. You have to look at your own self and see where you have fall short in the glory of God, in pleasing God to the fullest. Amen? Peter said, you know, in verse 38 of Acts chapter 2, repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus. The, even when we look and we see how the first early church broke away from, from, from the church that Jesus started and went uh, to take the model of uh, of what we call we term today the Catholic Church. We see how you know the, the you know the laws was changed, things were changed in terms of God's law. He said you must be baptized in water. Then now we have sprinkling, we wash the head. Then you know uh, Martin Luther came and said no, you know uh, no 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 no. There's certain things that's going on that is not right. It's not in accordance to the word. God would always have a ram in the bush who somebody would stand up and say no. You know he always had somebody who would stand up and be bold and say no this is wrong many times people we are living in a time when everybody wants to be spiritually and politically correct nobody wants to talk about the things that displease god nobody wants to talk about the issues that is making god sad and and, and making him that grieve in his spirit because guess what everybody wants to be loved everybody wants to be accepted everybody wants to be with the world you know, has stepped into the church and the church have stepped into the world. That's how we see, you know, this is what happening in, in Christendom today. The promise is unto you and to your children. What promise? In Acts chapter 38, uh, sorry, Acts chapter 2 verse 39. The promise is unto you and to your children. Yes, the promise that God was, Peter was talking about was the promise of salvation. Amen? You must be born again. It's not just for you, but you have to speak that promise over your children and your children's children. Amen? And to all that are far, even those that are far off. Sometimes we have family members. Sometimes we have friends. We have people, our loved ones that they are not really connected. They might be disconnected in the natural, but in your heart, you remember to pray for them. Remember to lift them up in prayer. Remember them in prayer. Amen. Because you know the Bible says, "Pray always." You know, pray without ceasing. He said, "Watch and pray. Be 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 watchful." Those are things that God has commanded us to do. He said, "Observe to observe and to do all." Amen. In AD 325, it you know they formed what you call the Council of Nicaea, which was a meeting that came. You know, where they, they those who had left the church, the early church, they came together with the Roman official, and they came up with having this new church, which is the Catholic Church. I said last week, and then all these things. Came came into play many times we want to replace god with man we give more credence to, to maybe somebody whose god is just using as a prophet as a pastor as a bishop and we worship man we worship the creature rather than the creator god don't share his glory with no man amen he wants us to put him first place in his life in our lives and everything else will be added on to us this is what god wants for, from us amen praise the name of the lord
Alléluia. God is great. Everything about God is great. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What a mighty God. He is great. We must hear his word. We must hear the word of God. Faith come by hearing and hearing and by the word of God. So what you want to know what God has commanded you to do? He's teaching us to do all that he said. We must hear the word of God. There's so many times that we don't want to hear the word of God. You, God is not going to say, okay, because there's so many divisions, because there's so many d- denominations, they, because there's so many mindsets, because there's so many doctrines that you have been exempt from following after me he said no he said he has given the opportunity that to him jesus to his son jesus christ that the world to him will be saved he come that the world to him might be saved it doesn't matter what you believe because the gospel is so prevalent in this times it's so prevalent that there's no reason that you can pick up your bible and read the word of god for yourself there's no reason why you don't know what is truth and what is a lie because the holy spirit is available to us all all you have to do is submit your heart and ask god ask we repent submit your life to him say jesus christ i ask i confess with my mouth and i believe in my heart that you are truly the only begotten son of the living god i confess with my mouth and i really believe and i ask you oh god father i want to turn away from my sins i confess my sins to you and if you want you can say these are the sins that i've been doing these are the things that i know is wrong and he's will he's willing he's able and he's just he shall forgive you and as you make that confession you make up your mind i the things i used to do i don't want to do them no more i don't want to do those things anymore i want to turn my life around and i want to live to please you amen and i want you to bring ask I asking you daddy that send the Holy Spirit to live inside of me to come inside of me to to live there I present my body as the temple of the Lord holy and acceptable unto you which is the least thing I can do for you the Holy Spirit will come into your heart and he will live there and guess what as you make that confession Jesus who is the one who searches your our hearts he know that you are serious and when you make that confession he will send that Holy Spirit to live inside you your name will be there written in heaven hell shall never be your portion you might say oh but I don't know if I really want to give, give my life to Christ I don't even know I don't know if I want to make that decision well let me say to you no one knows the hours in which Jesus Christ is coming. Not only that we do not know the hour, but no one of us know that when we are going to be called in called into eternity. Amen. He wants us to know today that as we submit our life to him, we are securing our eternal destiny. We are saying that listen, I am not living my life by guess anymore i have made my salvation my eternity sure my passport out of this life is already stamped eternity i don't have to worry about whether i'm going to a christless eternity because i'm already stamped 
on my passport is already stamped heaven amen because you have put jesus christ as first place in your life by accepting him because it says uh, by your mouth confession is made uh, amen you might be sick tonight or you might be going through some things god wants you to accept jesus christ as lord and savior you cannot uh, make the ex the the what should say the excuse that there's so many different denominations i don't know what to believe start uh, with asking Jesus Christ into your heart. Start by reading his word. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to you this evening. You must be born again. You must be born of water and of the spirit. Amen. He wants you to accept that you are a sinner. And that he has grace and love. And he has your life in his hand and he has the power to save you amen that no one comes to the father but by him if you are born again and you're going through certain things in your life and you're wondering where is god you know in my situations god wants you to know that now is the accepted time he wants you to know that he has the power to break every chain he wants you to know that whatever is holding back good things in your life whatever is frustrating you whatever is that you feel like you're giving you feel like giving up sometimes he wants to break every chain tonight he wants you to move up higher with him he wants you to just not go through your salvation he wants you to take the word of god seriously and not just become a hearer of the word but become a doer of the word we learn in part and we understand in part. He wants you to walk with a deeper spirit of discernment. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, we see the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's go to first, sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We see the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. And one of them is a spirit of discernment. Amen. He wants us to be discerning. He wants us to know what time of day it is. Amen. He said, no brethren, praise the name of the Lord. First Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 1. He said, no concerning spiritual gifts. I would not have you ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away onto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Therefore, I give you to understand that no man speak by the spirit of god called jesus a curse and that no man can say that jesus christ is lord by but by, but by the holy spirit but there are, there are diversities of gifts but the same spirit but there are difference of administration but the same lord and there are diversities of operations but it is the same god which worketh all in all but the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all for to one is given by the spirit the word of wisdom to another the word of knowledge by the same spirit to another faith by the same spirit to another the gift of healing by the same spirit to another the working of miracles to another prophecy to another discerning of spirits uh-huh to again to another discerning of spirits spirits plural meaning there are different types of spirits to another diverse kinds of tongues to another the interpretation of tongues but all these work it with one and the same self same spirit dividing to every man severally as he will amen as for the body is one and has many members and all the members that are one body being made many are one body so also is christ christ is one he is the head of the church and there is one body. If you are going to whatever church you are going to, whatever denomination you are following, you have to just make sure that whatever doctrine that you are you are sitting under, it is, is in accordance to the word of God. Amen? Don't compromise with, with what you hear. If you're hearing something and you are doing something that is not in the word of God, it is not according to scripture. It does not line up with what the Holy Spirit with this, this saying in the word of God then we need to go back to God and inquire from the Holy Spirit we need to ask questions go to the word of God and see what the word of God is saying concerning that thing watch and pray be discerning ask the Holy Spirit to deposit the gift of discernment amen so that you will be able to grow to the full stature of a man there's some things that we could we do and we don't realize how it affects the Holy Spirit we don't under affect we don't understand how it might displease God we want to be in in right standing with god so each one of us have to examine ourselves daily amen weekly monthly whatever however but daily we come to him daily we should examine ourselves he said if the body if the body i'm reading from verse 
verse um sorry verse 6 16 and he said if the air shall say because i'm not the eye i'm not of the body it is therefore is is there therefore not of the body if the whole body was an eye then where then where were the hearing if the whole body was hearing where is the smelling but no has god said the members every one of them in the body as it pleased him amen may this this evening you know we'll continue on saturday morning again at 9 a.m when you'll hear salvation and, and revelation but this evening if you do not know jesus christ as your lord and savior father in the name of jesus if that one who do not know you as lord and savior they said if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that jesus christ is lord you'll come into that heart and that you'll live there forever so we ask your father bring unison bring unity bring togetherness oh god with oh god the spirit of god with your son jesus with god the father almighty bring oh god that one who do not know you together with who you are with your son jesus christ that two is better than one that they will you will walk with that one your holy spirit will oh god lead that one i ask you to forgive oh god that one as they confess their sins to you i ask you to send your holy spirit to live oh god and deposit oh god gifts especially oh god the gift of discernment oh god fill that one with your love and lead them to oh god the place of worship that is well pleasing to you oh god in the name of jesus lead them oh god oh god by your spirit not by might not by power but only by your spirit and oh god father i decree and i declare that someone today has brought joy to you but because the angels are rejoicing over one soul that said yes this evening but that one who have already known you as lord and savior i decree and i declare oh god that oh god even that the confusion oh god oh god the lord god the questions that they are asking concerning oh god even the, the place that they are worshiping in oh god the things that oh god they are no they have they have no clarity on that oh god is this of you or is it not of you i ask you to send oh god a spirit of discernment by the power of your holy spirit that that one will know without the shadow of the doubt what thus said your gospel the apostles doctrine the one that you gave to the church the very first church that you started that we will all even oh god father each one every one of us will get back to what you have said in your word in the name of jesus jesus oh god i ask you oh god father lord god do not leave us out oh god but i ask you oh god that we will work out our salvation with fear and trembling oh god you said satan has deceived the whole world oh god but father we shall never be deceived oh god i decree and i declare oh god the oh god father the spirit of wisdom of revelation of knowledge the spirit of discernment i decree and i declare it upon oh god your people in the name of the father son and holy spirit do not leave it. any one of us out in Jesus' name. We shall not be deceived by Satan and his tricks and those of all those, oh God, Father, who is working hard to drag, oh God, your people into a Christless eternity. We say thank you for your word this evening in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. This is salvation and revelation. Your choice, your life, your salvation. Jesus Christ is Lord. Evangelist Jennifer Pope, God bless you. Have a blessed evening. Amen and amen. Hello, brothers.